What's going on you guys, this is all day, day one and I'm going to be giving you guys another Wayfinder build video. So with this build video I'm going to be giving you guys is going to be a uh, Kairos 2.0 build. But essentially this is more so, or I guess more towards the uh, Hero 8 Kairos players. But if you are playing a base Kairos this can technically work for you as well. But if you are also only just playing the base Kairos you can still technically just run the same build that you've been running already if you had watched my previous video. This video is more so for those that are running a heroic Kairos but um, unfortunately cannot do what I had done in the past video because we had previously gotten a ninja nerf. Um, I had gotten a few comments of what people wondering why they didn't have double balance slots like I did and well unfortunately the devs decided to change one of the balance slots into a boss rush echo slot. and. For those of you that don't know, the boss rush echo slots are probably one of the worst slots or echo slots in general um, because when they cost too much, even if you, even though they cut half the echo cost or they cut the echo cost in half, it's still way too expensive and then you just don't gain much from it, especially with it having a very, very long cooldown. Um, you just don't really have any real benefits from it. But I found a way to kind of make this work. Um, it does require you to drop your power quite a bit, but you will gain a little bit more uh, ability power in return. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So as you see on the right, um, I'm no longer over 2500 power. I'm at 2359, but my ability power is slightly higher. My crit rating is definitely lower than what it was before. It was almost at 4000. Now it's at 3,000, barely over 3,000, um, and my physical defense and my magic defense are a lot lower as well. So this is more so for those are that are trying to just, I guess, do like a boss kill, or I mean not even just boss kills, you can just run this with whatever type of build you want, but this is more towards those that want to kill a boss quick. So on Kairos, as you can see, I have several blue echoes on and then I still have the Goblin Seer echo. I have the Hollow One echo that's a blue and maxed out and then instead of me running the Shoal Bellhorn or another um, Hollow One because I wouldn't be able to afford the echo capacity to run another I'm running a Codex Sage echo instead which gives me a high amount of ability power with a good chunk of crit rating and then I have another Codex Sage Echo right here. So as you can see, I'm running double blues. And then I have the Hollow Queen Echo, another blue. And I have a Tiding Echo, which is very cheap. But this one, I had to put a blue one here instead of a purple. So I can keep my Goblin Seer Echo here as well. And now for my weapons, it's pretty much the same as it was in the previous video where I have a gray Shoal Bellhorn Echo the purple tiding echo and double hollow one echoes now obviously these will end up changing in the future once i get purples um, i would just need to get double purples on here and not upgrade them until i actually have what i want um, just so you can kind of surpass the echo capacity with it so yeah if you end up getting purple echo, hollow ones hollow one echoes and um, even even if it's just for all four slots slot them but don't upgrade any of them until you have all four slotted and then upgrade it after. And then for my um, accessories, I have actually changed my accessories a bit. So I still have the Mystics Focus. And for those of you that are wondering where to get the Mystics Focus accessory from, you get it from doing any of the ice maps. But it has the thing is, if you do it on Hollow Heart, the high, the doing it on Hollow Heart means you'll get the accessory between level 26 to 31 or 32. If you do it on Bone Orchard on Sphere 2, generally it'll be around level 26 to 30 as well, um, or 25 to 30. And then if you do do it on the first ice map, I don't remember. It's pretty low level, so I wouldn't even recommend going to that map in general because it's a, it's a bit too big. I don't even remember if there's actually any prisoners on the first ice map in Reaver Woods. So I would just go to Bone Orchard on Sphere 1 or Sphere 2, recommend Sphere 2, or just go to Hollow Heart on Sphere 1. And um, 
it is an RNG drop still. It's not guaranteed to get a Mystic's Focus, but you save the prisoners, the prisoners that are caged. You open the, once you open the gate, you talk to them and they'll give you a random accessory. Um, and that's how you get your Mystic's Focus. Again, it is RNG, but if you get it, then that's, I mean, that's the only way you can really get it as far as I'm concerned. And then the Burned Out Tracer, you get this when you kill sh the um, Shul Bellhorn Goblin boss. And it maxes, I believe, at like level 25. Um, but the one I'm using has double attack slots, I believe. Oh no, it has an attack and a balance slot. And then the Earthen Might, you get this, uh, well, where I got mine from was using the Flora Imbuement Mutator on Hollow Heart. Um, and once you do do it like that, then you have a chance at getting Earth and Might because each imbuement, each mutator, or elemental, um, they have different accessories that drop. And Earth and Might gives you just straight up all ability power, which is really, really, really nice. And I got extremely lucky by having it drop double attack slots as well, which is again really, really, really nice. So this is where a lot of my ability power comes from because Earth and Might gives you straight ability power and then the Burned tra burned Out Tracer also gives you straight um, attack, uh, not attack, um, ability power as well. And then Mystic's Focus gives you ability power, crit rating, and crit power. Now eventually I will end up switching these or switching all three, but um, you actually will want to farm the Spider's Fang and a Cursed Bracer and then craft spore pendants. Um, the accursed bracer you get from farming deceiver or the deceiver. Spider's fang you get from farming legion, and the spore pendant you can just craft those. So I've already crafted just one spore pendant, but it didn't give me the echo drops I needed. So I need to go farm for more materials to keep crafting more of them, which is nice. And the thing about the spore pendant is it is a level 25 item and it's like a hundred i think in its echo slot capacity which is still really good for a crafted item and then the the stats you get are actually pretty good because you get ability power and crit rating with magic defense a cursed bracer you get ability power and crit power spider's fang is crit rating crit power and ability power and the set bonus is ability power with crit power so it's very 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 powerful Obviously, you're going to have the unfiltered arc blessed drought and the greater prim, uh, primeval elixir too, or you can just have whatever you want, honestly, for that second um, a consumable slot. It doesn't matter what you put on it. As long as you really have the unfiltered arc blessed drought, that's what's going to really help you a lot with your ultimates. Uh, for boss farming, I actually decided to switch my abilities. So. When it comes to wanting to one phase a boss or just skip phases, you regardless, no matter what you're doing, you want to max out Siphon Radiant and then put three points into Hand of Reckoning. So you get that 15% increase in damage towards your ultimate. It's a pretty significant amount um, from what I've noticed because I was hitting really high with the with having this and then i wasn't hitting as high obviously because it's like i'm you're losing 15 percent damage on your ultimate basically if you don't run it but if you're not trying to one phase the bosses or anything like that then obviously savage rake is going to be better because it's just better overall especially if you're doing expeditions because you can heal yourself with it if you are fighting against the boss like the twins the storm twins or argent hand or something like that then obviously it's going to be way better than all right, way better to have Savage Rake maxed, up, maxed out versus having Hand of Reckoning maxed out. But when it comes to like Legion and the first, where their attacks don't really, they don't really attack you as often, and it's pretty easy to just telegraph, or it's easy to dodge them because they're pretty well telegraphed. Um, you don't really need the self healing then, and then you also have your health pots. Um, but yeah, Siphon Radiant, you definitely want to make sure you have that maxed out because you're getting 100% damage increase. It's not just you either, it's your allies, anyone that's attacking them. So if you're playing in a group, you still want to make sure you have the Siphon Radiant maxed. And then you're going to have Hand of Reckoning maxed, so you get that 15% extra damage. Now, again, you don't have to go with Hand of Reckoning, you can go back to just using Savage Rake. I always switch between the two, depending on what I'm running. Now for your affinity. Obviously, I can't respect my affinity, but um, when it comes to just wanting to build your ultimate up really fast, 
or not really fast, but a lot faster than most, uh, you want to max out instinct. And then if you want to focus primarily on savage rake damage, like the DPS for enemies that don't have a damage gate, um, you want to go focus. You want to go 15 and focus instead then, because then you go from having five max savage rakes to eight maxed savage rakes, which is a lot because realistically you can hit about 20,000 damage per savage rake and higher. And, um, that's 20,000 times 8 versus 20,000 times 5. So you're going to be doing a lot of damage or a lot of DPS with the Savage Rakes if you have this maxed out. Discipline, you only need the 5 points. When you use f 3 Savage Rakes, you're up to 15% additional damage because you get 5% five, um, 5 additional damage for 5 seconds for every Arcane Fragment used. And the only way you can use the Arcane Fragments is when you use the Savage Rake. Now for my masteries, I'm still using the Arcane Repose on um, the daggers just because it gives a huge damage buff. It's a 20% damage increase when you repose an enemy. Obviously for like the le or for like Legion, you you're not going to really be able to make use of this. So it's whatever whatever you want to do with the, the Twin Striker melee mastery. Now for your Executioner melee, from what I've heard, and I think it was even said from the devs, momentum dispersal actually is not working. Um, either it's not working or it's not working as intended. They're generally not as clear as they should be, but we don't know if it's not working as intended or if it's just not working at all. But from what I know is, and from my own experiences, when you activate it and sometimes when you back out, it just it doesn't activate anymore. And, or it turns itself off. So it's it's a little weird on that. But yeah, that's pretty much all for this build. Like, I don't think there's anything else I really need to cover. Um, my ability power is, as you can see, is definitely a little higher than what it was before. I am a little under power rating, but that's okay. Weapons are still gonna be the same. I still run Epitaph. If I'm trying to one phase bosses or skip phases, otherwise I'm just running Knight's Edge. I know that there is the Tooth and Claw um, weapon and Tempest. I don't really care too much about using Tempest because Tempest in itself is just very, very, very powerful. And if you run Tempest, you might as well just go all weapon power. Um, but Tooth and Claw apparently is very, very good as well. If you want to just run a Savage Rake setup, a Savage Rake build, you can do that. Run Savage Rake with the same accessories, same Echoes that I have right here. And um, you'll just pretty much, I guess, spam your Savage Ricks as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with this video. Hopefully this helped you guys out. I know this is a little bit shorter, but um, I, there's not, like I said, there's not much for me to go over, except that I am running a few different accessories to make myself a little stronger. So it does give you something to farm for. And um, also like the different weapons or different accessories that I just showed you guys or was just talking about. The one from Legion, from the Spider's Fang, the one from Deceiver for the um, Accursed Bracelet or whatever it's called, and then the Pendant that you can craft. So you can get all three of those fairly, I wouldn't say easily, but you know where to farm. And then obviously like for your Echoes, your Codex Sages you get from farming Repository, you get your Hollow Queen from farming Hollow, the Hollow Heart and the Hollow Arena, the Hollow One Echoes you get from Hollow heart as well from the hollow one enemies the little wood guys but um very low drop chance tiding echoes you get from just killing like those little spiders um very low drop rates as well goblin seer echoes drop these pretty often but um the purples are still very hard on rng uh shul bellhorn again is from the uh, repository event uh, it's like an arena event you gotta make sure you turn all four statues towards the middle so the beam is hitting the middle and then you deposit the data fragment of the goblin and then yeah that's literally all the echoes you're going to be using again hopefully this video helped you guys out if it does please go ahead and leave a like comment subscribe if you want some other helpful information i do stream on twitch as well at all day day one uh, so you guys can always come by whenever you want if you see me streaming um or if you just want to hang out i do plan on making other videos for other characters as well i'm not going to just focus solely on kairos 
but as leveling goes um i kind of just don't really care at the moment to level too much on another character but i will be posting a level guide video as well but anyways that's pretty much it this is all day one have a good day good night peace